Uh, so, good evening to all of you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, in fact, good morning to Professor Dulakia. Right now, he is in United States. Uh, on behalf of the Indian Econometric Society and on behalf of uh, uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar School of Economics, Bangalore, we welcome you all to this um, statistics today lecture. As you all know, that uh, 29th June every year. Uh, which is the birthday of um, uh, our father of Indian statistics, uh, Professor P.C. Mohan Lobby's uh, birthday. The government of India celebrates uh, this as a day of uh, national statistics uh, to commemorate the pioneering contributions of Professor Mohan Lobby's to the field of um, uh, Indian statistics. And I'm sure all of you know that he's pioneering work on um, a national sample survey. He's, um, in fact, even now it has been uh, used by many countries in the world. Um, in fact, um, uh, for the Indian Econometric Society, it's actually a special day for us. Uh, this society is actually nurtured by Professor Mahan Lobis in the initial days uh, with the help of Professor C.R. Rao um, as early as in 1960s. Uh, since last year, uh, we have been uh, uh, having this um, uh, lecture series jointly organized by these two institutions. And last year we had a very interesting talk by uh, Dr. Burman, and this year we have uh, uh, we are very happy that you know Professor Dolakia has uh, agreed to give this lecture on the topic uh, the needs of subnational account statistics and the present status in India. I'm sure all of you know that uh, this is a very very um, uh, important topic for uh, subnational economies um, and. Um, uh, and I'm sure most of you know about the contributions of uh, Professor Dolakia. In fact, he's not new to the Indian Econometric Society. But since there are many students of our university who are participating in this um, event, for their benefit, I would like to introduce briefly Professor Dolakia, sir. Uh, Professor Ravindra Dolakia has over 45 years of research and teaching experience uh, in leading institutes such as um, IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, MS University Baroda and uh, Sardar Patel Institute. His areas of research interests are macroeconomic policies, growth and development, agriculture, urbanization, labor, productivity, health and education, and in the areas of national and subnational accounts. He has worked in various government committees. In fact, the list is very long, and I'm going to only quote few of them. Um, and in fact, he was just a, he was a member of the first monetary policy committee of the Reserve Bank of India, a member of the sixth Central Pay Commission, member of the high level committees on 10th Advisory Board of CAG, a committee on savings and investment estimation, expert committee on economic revival measures, including fiscal restructuring in the state economy post COVID-19, um, restructuring of the state public sector units, the public debt management committee. In fact, it's, the list goes on, you know, there are so many things which um, and Dr. Dulaki has actually served and contributed for the public policy. Uh, uh, for our interest, Professor Dulaki has actually chaired uh, two important committees, uh, one on committee and financial sector statistics. In fact, when Dr. Burman was chairman of the National Statistical Commission, this committee was formed under Dr. Dulaki. And then later, uh, there's a committee, advisory committee and subnational accounts uh, appointed by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. He has served in various independent, various companies and institutions as independent directors. And in fact, very recently, he has been nominated to the RBA Central Board. It's a very, very prestigious institute, uh, prestigious position as uh, independent director. Above all, I think for us, what is very important is he is our own past president of the Indian Econometric Society and um, and um, a, a very uh, important um, you know pillar of the Indian Economic Society. So we welcome you, sir, for this um, lecture. And um, in fact, this this lecture would be chaired by another uh, stalwart in Indian official statistics, uh, Dr. R. B. Burman. Uh, in fact, last year he has given this lecture, a statistics day lecture. And Dr. Burman had a very long stint at the RBI retired as the executive director in charge of the statistics and economics. And um, in fact, during his stint in RBI, he has contributed immensely to the official statistics for one of the reasons why RBI has been a main source for uh, statistics, official statistics for researchers and students in the country. I think the credit actually goes to Dr. Burman 
for his um, uh, you know contributions in uh, making these statistics available for the Indian researchers. He has also served as the chairman of the National Statistical Commission, and during his period, a number of committees were formed and made significant recommendations for strengthening the official statistics in the country. Last year, Dr. Burman also received a Professor P. C. Mahanlobi's award from the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation for his outstanding contributions to the official statistics. He was the second person to receive after um, uh, Dr. C. Rangarajan. Actually, that's uh, that's a very very prestigious for all of us. He is also one of our past presidents, and currently he is the managing trustee of the Indian Economic Association, Indian Economic uh, Econometric Society Trust. And um, I welcome uh, you, sir, for this um, uh, session for chairing. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of other many other uh, leading econometricians. Professor Kail Krishna is online. Uh, Professor Nachane is also supposed to join. I'm sure he will be joining soon. Uh, we have Professor M. Ramachandran, who is our uh, current president of the Indian Econometric Society. We also have other friends like Dr. DVS Shastri and many officials from Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and also from the state DES. I think that's where um, I think that's going to be very useful. The lecture is going to be very useful for state uh, uh, Department of Economics and Statistics. Before we leave the floor to Dr. Dolakia, I request all the participants to raise any questions that you have in the chat box. Uh, at the end of the lecture, we will take it one by one and um, and um, you know so that our my colleague Dr. Bipin will actually uh, coordinate that Q&A session. So with this, um, again, I welcome all of you. There are many of our students also part of this, and I welcome all of you for this Statistic Day lecture, and I request Dr. Dolakia to uh, give his talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Banamurthy. <coughs> Uh, respected uh, uh, Professor K. L. Krishna, uh, Dr. Uh, R. B. Burman, and uh, various other friends uh, from Econometric Society and uh, State Statistical Bureaus, and uh, of course the MOSPI, uh, who would be uh, listening to this lecture. Uh, it is a pleasure to really interact uh, and give this lecture on such an important uh, day. This is a statistics day. Uh, one of the purposes of the statistics day is basically to bring the producers and the users of the statistics together and actually share both their concerns. I think the users need to understand what are the constraints on the on the producers of the of the statistics in this country and the and the producers should understand what are the what are the needs and what are the requirements of the statistics that they are producing by the users i think if this dialogue is uh, very productively and fruitfully con i mean carried out it will be a very useful contribution because probably the requirements will be addressed by the producers of the statistics in this country and the users should understand what best use they can make of the statistics sometimes the users have the tendency to ignore some of the constraints and some of the fundamental methodologies and assumptions which are which are required to produce certain kind of statistics and apply those techniques which may not be really warranted by the quality of the data. <laughs> but anyway, I think that is the whole idea. That is the reason why I chose this topic. <laughs> and just uh, it's a it's a question of uh, recognizing a few things here and there. So let me share the Uh, is the presentation uh, seen? Yes, sir. OK. So the I have chosen the topic need for subnational account statistics and present status in India. Now uh, the. 
the way in which I propose to go for next 40-45 minutes is basically we will start with the, the consideration fairly quickly. Why do we need macroeconomic statistics in the first place? Then I would be talking about the status of national account statistics in India. Again, in a very brief, uh, briefly, I'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about the levels of subnational account statistics and availability in India. I think there is an important thing that what are the levels in at which the statistics are available and where do we stand there? The demand for so the subnational account statistics is the next, uh, uh, I mean, you know, topic that I would be touching upon. Final, then I'll talk about the mismatch between the demand and supply of statistics at the subnational level. This is a very relevant thing according to me because this is where the real problems are, uh, are uh, faced and we find that the users and the producers are, they need to really understand each other very well on this issue. The, then I'll talk about the practical problems in availability of required statistics. These are the kind of constraints that the, the, the producers of the statistics are facing in the country. And finally, I have a few suggestions <laughs> to, by way of uh, way forward. I, I, I consider that these are the things which we need to do and address. I think uh, this would address, in my opinion, the, the, the purpose of this kind of a lecture. So let us uh, proceed straight to why do we need the macroeconomic statistics? The, the basic purpose of this is the, to produce these kind of statistics. In fact, you know, I'm not getting into the technical details about what kind of accounts have we have. Some seven accounts are there in the national account statistics. I'm not getting into those details. I'm simply saying, what are the needs? The need is basically the assess performance of an economy. Now, this is a very, very relevant thing. Performance of an economy can be assessed in many various ways, but one of the important ways in which we can assess the performance of an economy is to talk about the volume of the economic activities which are carried out. Then the next uh, thing is to measure impact of policies followed by the government on the economy. I think that impact assessment is important. Similarly, measure productivity of different resources like labor, capital, uh, technology, technological changes and various other kind of things. I mean, that is that is what uh, we need to really look at. The measurement of the productivity of different resources. Then measure, measure standard of life in the economy. This is a very relevant kind of uh, a, a purpose. By and large, it is, uh, it is not easy to measure the standard of life in any economy. However, that, that this is a very important purpose. Similarly, consider the size of the market of different goods and services. I think these are the, this is a very important use by the, by the business uh, in, the, in the economy. And this, is, this cannot be, I mean, undermined or cannot be underestimated. This is a very, very relevant uh, use because that really prompts the, the investments in the country and that promotes the growth. Then the next thing is consider the tax revenue potential of the economy. I think government would be extremely important, interested in this kind of uh, the use of the uh, macroeconomic statistics. They want to really estimate what are their incomes, what is likely to be their incomes. Similarly, consider capacity to incur public debt because you know public debt cannot be incurred endlessly i think there are some some uh, very very prudent limits on the public debt and that can uh, be really counted and that can be measured by the macroeconomic statistics when i talk about all this say for instance assess the growth potential of the economy or compare the economic performance over time that is growth and across the economies that is a comparison which is uh, 
considered within the framework now whenever i am talking about all these measures all these uh, needs they are basically arising out of the macroeconomic theory and microeconomic theory i think this is a very very important matter to realize that the theory and the need for macroeconomic statistics are very coherently related and you cannot ignore one and talk about the other i think the theory talks about what is ideally required and the actual data will say what are the constraints and therefore what is available i think the the statistician the econometrician who has to really strike a balance is to ensure that he he does not ignore the the the, the theory at the same time understands and appreciates all the constraints which are which are followed or which are imposed by the availability of the statistics so that the statistics can be meaningfully interpreted and meaningfully used i think it is that that is the basic uh, matter the the status of the national account statistics in india just briefly we talk about that availability is satisfactory for most of the uses whatever uses i have uh, enlisted the availability is reasonably satisfactory long time series data available since 1950 51 in most of the cases in some cases it is available from 1960 61 and it is usable quarterly estimates and regular revisions as per the pre announced calendar is also there so we are by now following a very very clearly pre announced calendar to release the estimates both quarterly and advance and revised i think it's a re regular revisions which are taking place what is most relevant is there are 16 measures of aggregate product and these are very relevant matter and all these things are available at the national level <laughs> the 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 distinctions are gross and net the difference is the depreciation or the consumption of capital fixed capital national and domestic this is again very relevant matter <laughs> the national product and the domestic product these are the the difference is the net factor income from abroad market prices and basic prices again the differences are at the in the valuation so the products are valued at market prices or they are valued at the basic prices and the difference is the net indirect taxes that is net product taxes and finally all these are the things available at current prices and at constant base year prices that means it is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 is this 16 16 measures different aggregate different measures of aggregate products are available uh, over and above that there are two other measures of aggregate incomes namely personal income and personal disposable income are also available at the national level this is the broad availability mm -hmm. then we can say that the estimates of supply side by sectors of activity like agriculture manufacturing mining uh, forestry fishery then uh, you know the trade transport and other services these are all the kind of things about 17 sectors and sub sectors are are available so the estimates on the supply side is by sectors of activity then you have estimates of the public sector accounts which are also available estimates by rural urban residents is only available for the base years so whenever the base year is changed this uh, estimates of rural urban incomes are also made available but it is not a regular time series that is available this is a, a very relevant matter you need this kind of changes uh, in the urban rural incomes once in a while you you don't need necessarily require a a regular kind of a time series this is a, this is what the producers of the statistics believe and probably the users also do not put the demand or pressure to get the rural urban uh, 
income differentials on a regular series. Estimates of saving by corporate, government and household sectors are available and that is what is uh, being used also very frequently at the national uh, and uh, the planning uh, uh, level uh, for, for policy making and all that. Estimates of flow of funds among these and foreign sectors is an important thing. I think RBI, uh, uh, Dr. Burman uh, is here. RBI is, uh, is uh, really preparing this kind of flow of funds estimates in a, in a major way. And we have uh, recently made the, the methodology more relevant. The estimates of uh, aggregate demand by all components, all components like the, the, uh, the, the uh, final private uh, consumption demand, public uh, consumption demand, the, then uh, the investment demand by private sector and public sector, by components, and exports and imports, all these are the components of final, uh, uh, I mean, uh, aggregate demand, which are available uh, at the national level. Similarly, estimates of income shares and not factor shares are available. Professor K. L. Krishna is there and uh, Dr. Shastri is there. So I would rather like to point out this very, very categorically that what is available is income shares and not factor shares. What theory requires is the factor shares and not the income shares. And very several researchers I have seen are confusing between the two and using income shares as if they are factor shares, which is not the correct thing. However, I mean, one, one needs to really appreciate this kind of difference because the income shares are the wage share, rent share, profit share, and uh, interest share, uh, whereas factor, factor shares are essentially the labor share, land share, capital share, and uh, the entrepreneur share. I think these are the things where the differences are that in income shares, you have a category of mixed income, which includes labor, rent, interest, everything. You have to really distribute these things. This requires some kind of uh, the appreciation of the constraints and appreciation of the, the way in which the economy works. But this is something which is very important. It is not uh, available. Factor shares are not available. Estimates of input output tables for the base years are available at the national level. Mm -hmm. Coming to the sub-national account statistics and availability, we, we find that the levels of subnational account statistics are essentially decided by <laughs> political decentralization of duties and powers as given in the constitution. And we have uh, three layers. That is, you have center, state, and the, the, the Panchayati Raj institutions. So essentially it is the, it is the three layer things we have approximated these three layers as the, the, the center, then the states, because states are very, very important uh, constitution, constituents of uh, the, the nation. And then you have the districts. So currently, as of now, only two levels are considered viable. The second uh, important matter is that based on which the, the, the subnational account statistics are, uh, are decided is the practical considerations based on costs and benefits. See, there are always costs of producing the statistics and the benefits are also very clearly when you are able to put these statistics to the analytical uses. Now, you know, considering this kind of the practical aspects, we find that in India, as of now, only two subnational levels are considered viable. The states, including the union territories, are the ones which are, which is one level, and the districts, which is the other level. <laughs> now, estimates of only GSDP and NSDP, that is gross state domestic product and net state domestic product at current and constant prices by variety of sectors, about 17 sectors are available 
since 1960-61. Since 2011-12, estimates at market prices are also attempted. However, I have my very serious reservations about this kind of the estimates because the methodology is, a, is only a, an experimental methodology. In fact, it is not a serious methodology at all to, to get the market prices at the state level. It is, it is merely an allocation in a way. Anyway, if you consider uh, this kind of things, then since 11-12, we have attempted the market price, the, all these estimates, GSDP, NSDP at market prices are also available. At the district level, estimates of only district domestic, district domestic product at basic prices are available for recent years. And this is also not true for all the states. In some of the states, they are attempting these estimates, but are not made public. So this is also a very relevant uh, kind of a thing. However, the district domestic product, the methodology and the estimation is attempted by and large by every state, whether it is made public or not is a different issue. What is more interesting and important is that although officially we have not been producing these statistics, I think some of the, the, the private uh, producers of statistics have attempted using variety of methods, including the, the night lights and uh, the, the satellite images, etc., to get the idea about the district domestic product. Why is it so? Because of the simple reason that there are demands for these statistics which go unfulfilled because of the lack of official statistics in this uh, regard. However, we need to talk about that a little more, but before that, let me just repeat that the official estimates of no other national account statistics aggregate are available at state or district levels in India. Whatever I have mentioned are the ones which are being which are uh, available. No other uh, national account statistics aggregates are available for all states or all districts in India. Some states are, I mean, you know, attempting to have some other kind of uh, estimates available, but it is very few. We are very few. The demand for some national account statistics at the state level are essentially the demand for official agencies and demand for from researchers and businesses. So from the official agencies you find, and this is my experience, I'm, I'm sharing my experience that what are the kind of demands that you get from the official agencies for the state level, uh, the state level statistics on GSDP, GN, uh, NSDP and things like that. Hmm. Comparing performance of the economy over time and across states. This is a, this is a very relevant kind of the, the purpose. I think Niti Aayog and uh, uh, erstwhile planning commission, finance commission were using this, the, this, these estimates for such purposes. Preparing human development index is a very, very important uh, matter because that is also something which uh, at, as an, at a national level, we are always trying to compare and uh, uh, rank the states according to the Human Development Index. And now we, people have started using this in Human Development Index uh, for districts also to rank the districts as per the human development. Assessing potential for tax revenues at the state level, this is a very relevant matter because every budget talks about these matters that you have to really estimate the tax revenues. Now, whether you use the, the GSDP, NSDP for uh, uh, assessing the potential for tax revenues or not is a different issue. But in several uh, states, these are actually being used for assessing the potential of the tax revenues. Providing fiscal discipline targets, including public borrowing, say for instance, the, there are the, the fiscal and uh, uh, fiscal responsibility and budget management act at the national level and the FRL at the, at the state level are now requiring us 
to provide the fiscal discipline targets in terms of the fiscal uh, deficit proportion to the 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 gdp the the the, the gsdp is is required because you know that is the target that we have to achieve so for that purpose we need uh, gsdp similarly for public borrowing how much public borrowing is allowed or required or is uh, is feasible uh, uh, prudently feasible is uh, also being considered by the by the this kind of statistics namely the gsdp or uh, nsdp some public policies on incentivizing or taxing specific activities are also required for that we need uh, the the estimates of gsdp nsdp by various sectors and subsectors so that we can actually see where exactly there is a need for a specific taxing purpose or for incentivizing finally there is a there is a need for measuring the standard of life of people because this is something which is politically very important and people want to really compare the the standard of life over the time and across the the states or the across the geographies the demand for researchers and businesses for the for the state uh, state account statistics is essentially in terms of assessing the level and trend of state income inequality this is a very relevant matter that this is uh, something which is basically used the state income statistics i think the researchers uh, who might be attending this uh, the lecture uh, and several of them also contribute papers in the econometric conference and uh, various other conferences are essentially using the state income estimates to to measure and talk about the level and trend of the state income inequality uh, in the country at a point in time and over the period of time similarly the businesses are essentially demanding this uh, statistics for assessing the market potential for specific products i think these are the kind of uses that we are currently finding for the sub national account statistics at the state level what is what is significant and for a person like me what is uh, what is really a a matter of concern is that there is hardly any demand for official statistics for assessing sources of growth and growth potential at the at the state level there is hardly any demand for assessing or estimating the savings and investment rates at the state level there is hardly any demand for private consumption patterns at the state level there is hardly any demand for international exports and imports emanating from the states i think this is also very very interesting and important thing even the businesses are not asking for this kind of statistics this is a very relevant uh, lacuna domestic exports and imports to the rest of the country international because you know the state exports to the other states and other territories and also to the international uh, exports i think both these kind of things are very very important the input output tables at the state level again are not in great demands at all of late we we find that this demands have started uh, getting registered but otherwise these are not the demands which are which are really hard pressing in the on the in that context similarly rural urban income differential even for a for a one point in time is not uh, getting uh, demanded i think this is a very important matter that we need to really consider that rural urban income differentials are important what people substitute is the consumption uh, differential now you know consumption differential and income differentials are two very different things and one cannot be used for the other similarly flow of funds among sectors and the states again not attempted at the state level this is where i would rather like to uh draw the attention of dr barman that rbi is doing its uh, its exercise very well 
in terms of the national uh, level things it is in fact trying to to perfect the methodology and all that but the 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 requirement of the similar flow of funds by, among the sectors and the states is also equally important it has not been felt people are not using but it is a, it is it is very often a question of whether whether demand drives the supply or the supply would drive the demand i think in economics we always say that supply creates its own demand so we should follow that kind of a principle and prepare some of the statistics even if it is currently not demanded maybe it will start uh, gathering the demand and uh, uses similarly employment coefficient at the at the at the state level is is important thing which has been actually not demanded to a significant extent demand for sub national account statistics at the district level if you find that the at the district level demand for official agencies is only for comparing standard of life across districts preparing human development index for the district because these are the two things which the the official agencies are interested in uh, looking at demand for researchers and business is for assessing the level of inequality in district income and human development again the researchers are more concerned and focusing on the inequality across districts and inequality in the across the geography rather than the assessing the market potential for specific products or uh, any such things i think assessing the market potential for specific products is a demand coming from the businesses and it is again for a very specific kind of the market that they are looking at what is again disturbing is hardly any demand for the official statistics at the district level is arising out of any public policy decisions at the district or state public policy decisions at the district or the state does not use the district domestic product estimates at all use of use in allocating resources by state finance commissions wherever there are state finance commission operating i i i am i am pain to say that very few of them if at all are asking for or even aware about the district domestic product estimates i think without that they are going ahead and allocating the resources assessing growth potential of the economy when you assess the growth potential overall at, at the national level you do not assess it through the the grassroot level i think it is it is a top down approach all the time rather than bottom up and we do not have any kind of demand emanating from the researchers or from the official statistics that we need to assess the growth potential of the district then state and then the nation it happens only at the at the macro level what is the mismatch between the demand and supply of statistics at the sub national level hmm. well the estimates of gsdp and gdp are based on income originating concept this is a very very important matter to understand very categorically it has been mentioned everywhere whatever reports and everything even our reports mention this very categorically that all the estimates at the the state and the district levels are based on income originating concept which basically is good and ideally it should be used for assessing productive capacity and reflecting efficiency of resource use it is basically adequate for comparing performance over time and across states with this limited thing that it is it is talking about productive capacity and efficiency of resource use however it is these two estimates which are being used for very variety of purposes for which they are not ideally suited like say for instance human development index standard of life of people and assessment of potential for tax revenue require income accruing concept which reflects the purchasing power 
and the economic well-being of people. These kind of things are simply not available at the district level. That is, supply is not there at all. What is what is supplied is the GSDP, DDP, which are based on the income originating. What is required in several of these things, human development index, standard of living of the people and assessment of potential of tax revenue, they require income accruing concept, which is not there. Fiscal discipline targets and limits on public borrowing require income accruing at market prices. Let me, let me repeat that it is an income accruing at market prices, which is required for assessing the fiscal discipline targets or public borrowing uh, limits. These things are not available. What is available is the, the income originating at market prices that also very recently and again with great limitations of the methodology followed to estimate the market prices. In fact, the, the current methodology is basically taking the difference of the, the, the basic price and market price at the national level and trying to simply allocate those, uh, those, those that difference across all the states, which is not a correct way of doing this. What is happening in this entire process is, and let me just come to the last point, then after I'll give my basic comments, that state and district income inequality. This is a very important thing for all the researchers, my young friends in the audience need to appreciate this point very well, that state and income inequality and market potential for products require personal income and personal disposable income at the state level or the district level. And these are not available. So what is being what is available and what is being used are two different things. Most of the researchers are in the, in the habit of overlooking the details of the methodology to arrive at the statistics which they are using. I think without appreciating the limitations of the statistics and the, the constraints on producing these statistics, whatever is available is being used without any such concern. As a result, what happens is in econometrics point from the econometrics point of view, this leads to a serious measurement error. And this measurement error is not an, a, a, a completely unbiased kind of a thing or it is not a completely random uh, measurement error. It is linked to various other things. So as a result, what happens is that there is a systematic bias. Probably you are not aware about that bias, but that bias gets entered. What is very often happening is that at the subnational levels, because of the variety of uh, constraints and factors, which we are going to see very soon, the methodology followed is basically using the national aggregates to to allocate across the states or across the districts. And very often these are allocated through only a couple of one or two maximum indicators. And these indicators, when you allocate according to an indicator, it implies that it is only the variation across the, the, the geographies in terms of that indicator, which reflects the overall variation in the series as per the required thing. Now that assumption implies that the correlation is perfect. And it is extremely rare to find a perfect correlation. In fact, the correlation is not sometimes not even 50%. And then we find about, we talk about the, the, the using the, the indicator to allocate the, the resources, uh, the, allocate the aggregates. This is a serious error. Not only that, the basic thing, say for instance, when you talk about the income inequality and you start talking in terms of the, the income originating, that is productive capacity or 
पर पर कैपिटा राधर देन पर्सनल डिस्पोजेबल इनकम रिजल्ट आर सिंपली नॉट रिलायबल आर सिंपली नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल इन दैट सेंस ऑफ द टर्म सो द प्यूरेस्ट वुड क्वेश्चन दिस थिंग एट ऑल दिस थिंग वेरी सीरियसली अनफॉर्चुनेट पार्ट एंड आई एम आई एम I am also coming from the academics part. I have spent all my life in academics, so I know that the guys who are refereeing the, the these articles also tend to overlook this matter because the authors have overlooked this matter, and they do not comment or do not talk very 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 seriously about such measurement errors or such misuse of the statistics. I think to to my mind it is important for the the users and it is important for the producers to understand that there is a complete mismatch and the producers should try and accommodate the demands however the users should also try and accommodate the constraints on the on the producers i think we need to appreciate the constraints of each other and try to arrive at a as an amicable solution where we can actually make better use of the the statistics we need to improve we need to go about uh, doing certain things but we cannot compromise on the quality of conclusions and quality of research i think what is happening is we are we are turning blind to some of these uh, kind of uh, the 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 limitations and the constraints and as a result we unnecessarily get into a certain conclusions which are not warranted at all i mean to the practical problems of availability let me say the data sources you need digitization and computerization have opened up new and more comprehensive data sources not fully conducive to the sub national level estimation like mca 21 some financial products these are some of the 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 the, the, the obvious illustrations where the data sources are not conducive to the sub national level estimation we need to work on that and we need to make sure that these data sources can be used otherwise they are extremely good uh, data sources at the national level timeliness of responses voluntary and not mandatory this is a issue which uh, the cso the erstwhile cso was raising all along all the time that the 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 submission of the the statistics is only voluntary in our country and not mandatory as a result regular delays in data collection and compilation takes place inadequate uh, timely responses make the estimates inaccurate and unreliable if any inadequate uh, timely responses are there you tend to use whatever is available and ignore the rest wait for the rest when they come they you you tend to revise and you revise in a very very substantial way so that the initial uh, estimates becomes completely unreliable and it becomes inaccurate so this is a very relevant matter revisions at irregular intervals depending on the incoming data and inefficiency in processing the data in estimation that is the kind of the 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 the, the major issue at the state level lack of computer and digital infrastructure in in general at the state and district and tehsil level and in ds at this levels in particular i think the the computer and digital infrastructure is very poor at the in the ds itself the department of economics and statistics itself at these three levels state district and tehsil level you do not have a sufficient kind of the computer and digital infrastructure so that you even today you find that most of the data are collected uh, in the sheets written by hands and that can create lot of different a lot of difficulty in errors as well as in in uh, in uh, delays in submission of the of the necessary statistics and all that 
this requires very urgent kind of uh, the addressing of the issue finally you have gaps in quality and quantity of human resources in the des i mean there are multiple tasks assigned to the des staff because you know somehow the government is working with a, with the minimal staffs and you find that des the department of economics and statistics becomes an easy prey for uh, this kind of uh, multiple tasking assigned by the political wing and as a result what happens is that the priorities get blurred the the priorities of the the department of economics and statistics are not basically coming out very clearly and you find that they are very very often compromised this leads to the political inter interference also so there are a significant kind of the practical problems which the which, which are faced by the the district and the state uh, uh, level uh, data producers what is the way forward well i'll not uh, spend lot of time because each one of us can have a very variety of views on this <laughs> however i have uh, my in my opinion what is urgently required is create adequate digital and computer infrastructure at the state district and tehsil level this is the first thing that we can do create a digital and computer infrastructure people should have the 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 desktop or the laptop in on that table i mean they cannot be given the task without uh, this kind of things recruit appropriate number of at least second class masters degree holders in economics and statistics in the department of economics and statistics right now that is not happening in that all sorts of uh, backgrounds like say even the english literature and uh, hindi literature are uh, finding that uh, they are uh, getting recruited in the department of economics and statistics i think that requires change because in that case there is no appreciation of the concepts of the the things that they are measuring or the things that they are basically producing as a statistics there is no concern at all ds should be made autonomous and headed by a subject expert at the at the additional chief secretary level at the state so that it can set its priorities i think it should be made autonomous is a very very important uh, recommendation that statistics generation of the statistics is an is, is an is a is, is an activity where political intervention and interference should be minimal in fact there should not be any such thing they should be autonomous and they should have their own priorities uh, set therefore you need a subject matter specialist to head that that department at and and the level of that person should be additional chief secretary so that the other state bureaucracy should be really uh, you know be made answerable well defined calendar for regular revision of estimate should be announced and followed this this goes without saying regular in house training for the des staff in relevant subjects should be carried out this is again a very relevant matter finally a nation wide sample survey of income savings and expenditure of by households is a is a is an important thing which is lacking in this country and is, the need is felt for a long period of time i think it should be regularly carried out by the nsso covering all districts and rural urban residents once this happens i think this is a recommendation you find in all important uh, committees and all important uh, national level uh, things in which at least i was a member and i am talking from the the days of professor rangrajan's uh, commission to down to my own uh, committee we are finding that this is a very very important matter once this happens we will be able to really attempt meaningful estimation of the income accruing and we will be in a position to talk about more meaningfully about some of the inequalities and other uh, kind of 
the mismatches that we were talking about earlier will be addressed. Thank you very much. Okay, I think. Uh, uh, thanks, Professor Dhorakya, for a very wonderful the exposition on the sub national statistics. And I know that you have been deeply involved with the Gujarat statistical system. So you have a first hand uh, knowledge about what is going on. And that is truly reflected in today's talk. And I think. Uh, uh, it talks about the, the outcome that is expected out of theory and the actual outcome. And this is where the role of statistics comes in a big way. And you have, you have uh, put uh, things in a very, very nice way. Uh, before I make my own comments, I think it will be in fitness that we throw it open uh, to the audience for a few questions. Yeah, I think Mr. Manurti has the chat box in his control. I think Mr. Vanamurthy, you, can you please take over on the question? Um, I think my colleague Dr. Bipin will take over, sir. Bipin, yeah. can you? Yeah, sure. So we have a few questions here on the chat box. OK, so the first question is uh, how to maintain the it's coming from Pradeep Panda. So how to maintain the sanctity of data and why social sector data or data on sustainable development goals are not available at subnational levels? Uh, would you would you want me to answer uh, them right now or uh, all the questions first and then uh, and I answer? How do we go about? Uh, there are I can see three three or four questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first question is on the social statistics, right? Yes. How to maintain the sanctity of the data is the first question. Sanctity. Sanctity of the data of the data and then why social sector data or data on sustainable development goals are not available at subnational level okay okay next one uh, is there a specific reason why the district domestic products data of gujarat is not available <laughs> And uh, uh, he has raised another a few other questions as well. To what extent can we rely on the district uh, domestic products data for a comparison for the same state over the years and making comparison across states? OK. OK. And then he has just another specific question uh, where to get the data for rural urban uh, income estimates for the base years. I got mentioned in one of the slides that you can get the rural urban income estimates for the base year. So he has asked for the source. And uh, that's, a, that's a question by Vikash. Vikash was our faculty. And uh, there is another question from Amay Sapre from NIPFP. Mm -hmm. So his question is that a significant part of the nominal GSDP, except agriculture, are allocated from national totals. And for most of the states, all India consumer price index is used for deflating the current prices. <laughs> OK, these are leading to serious uh, sectoral level measurement er errors. What is your view on following a bottom up approach for sectors wherever possible? Great. And here's another question as well. How do we do regional accounting when data collection is being centralized? Great. Regional accounting. Yeah. When data collection. There are a few more questions. Um, probably you can answer these questions and uh, we will uh, take okay. those OK, yeah. OK, OK. Since there are other questions, so I'll be brief in my answers. Uh, Professor Berman, you may also like to address some of these questions yourself also, because you have 
uh, far more uh, practical experience of handling some of these things <laughs> so uh, yeah well, you can we'll, also we will fail by yeah, yeah. broad terms considering the time limit yes yes broadly, yes i will yes. broadly try to give sure. my mind on what we need to do no no sure i think uh, the question about the sanctity of the data see the the whole idea about this thing is that i was uh, i i referred to the data Uh, there is you know the estimates uh, production uh, by the agencies at the official agencies at the state level we have to start believing that some of the data that are being collected are from the fundamental ground level sources like say in agriculture and uh, uh, mining or forestry or fishery or any primary activity you find that the data are emanated from the ground level and these are the data getting used at the at the state statistical bureaus for estimating these things for district uh, domestic product also these data are being used so i am i am i am using some of these questions basically all together to answer more or less the similar things so essentially what you find is that the primary sectors data are by and large collected from bottom even the prices of the primary products by and large are collected at the at the at the ground level and that is how they are being used at the in for some of the products where the prices are not available or for, for uh, the 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 production data is not uh, reliably available it is only at the national level or at the state level whatever are the estimates they are getting allocated to the states by making some assumptions about the productivity about the productivity per acre etc and then you are generating those uh, estimates so as far as the sanctity of data is concerned we have to believe that the the, the data that there is a enough sanctity of this data they are not getting manipulated at all you cannot uh, start questioning this kind of things you have to believe and you have to say that the data are fairly collected as far as the social sectors uh, statistics is concerned probably that is not a part of my talk right now <laughs> because social sector statistics essentially you are if you are talking in terms of the it is it is not a part and parcel of the national account statistics per se and i was talking about sub national account statistics therefore this kind of data are whether the sustainable development uh, data i mean uh, part is available or not i would rather say that to the extent it gets reflected through the the the, the sub national account statistics these are the things which are getting reflected but not you are absolutely right they are not currently getting reflected to the extent to which it is required is there uh, any specific reason for gdp estimates not uh, getting uh, published in gujarat frankly speaking the reason is that the the data that are being collected and they are the the district domestic product which is being estimated do not fulfill the simple smell test as as we call it in uh, in general parlance the smell test is that the results are not basically passing that smell test people are not uh, in a in a in a position to uh, defend or understand because probably there are the the methodology is far from satisfactory it is not reflecting the true variation and why it is not reflecting the true variation i have i have talked about that that if you are allocating certain things only based on a few indicators here and there then that does not necessarily capture all all correct variations so that is also the reason so the politically they are they are not finding this uh, data very meaningful and that is the reason why they are not uh, giving the permission to publish ddp comparisons well i have been talking about that 
that BDP is used to compare across the uh, districts and across the states. Please understand when you are using the panel data or when you are using the comparisons like that over time, etc. Please note that the the you are the purpose is to capture the true variation, and the true variation because of the method that you are following is not properly captured. Secondly, the concept used is that of the, is the is the product originating, the income originating rather than income accruing. What is required for such comparisons is the income accruing, and not income uh, uh, originating. Ideally speaking, if you are talking about the inequalities across the states, you should really talk about the personal income or the personal disposable income. That is the right way of talking about the inequality. It is not the right way to talk about the productive capacity across the districts. That is uh, another thing. Uh, rural urban differential for the base year source. Uh, please understand that the source remains the same as the the source or the sources for calculating the 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 uh, domestic product at the at the state or uh, at the district level. The only thing is that for the base year, you find that a lot more details and lot more uh, samples, sample surveys are carried out precisely for getting the estimates. At that point in time, if you also insist on the rural urban breakup, you get a far better uh, thing. However, if your question is about the source, I think I have worked uh, sufficiently on that uh, for Gujarat and uh, for the states also. And there are quite a number of papers in the in the association's journal. I am talking about the Journal of Income and Wealth, uh, produced by the by the the association. I think uh, Professor Berman can throw better light on that uh, journal and all that. It is it is that journal which can which which gives uh, which give, which which publishes the papers by individual researchers like me and others uh, who are who are picking up some of these uh, kind of data gaps and data lacuna methodology etc. There we have uh, a couple of papers on the rural urban income differentials across all the states, but that is a private estimate, not the public, uh, not the official estimates. The the final question is regarding the bottom up approach, which is a correct thing. In fact, in my committee recommendation also, I have been talking about the bottom up approach to the extent possible. There are supra regional sectors where bottom up approach is not likely to work. You have to allocate the things for supra regional sectors across the regions. However, your point about that when the when the data is uh, data collection is uh, centralized, how can we get the regional accounting? Well, when the data collection is centralized, I think we can actually make sure that there is a there is a there is a clear cut identification of the data collected by the unit, and that identification should be in terms of geography. If you are in a position to put that geography dimension, then it is possible for you to actually decentralize and decompose this data into the regional units. Beyond that, I understand that there are issues and there are problems because some of the companies don't maintain the data, save on their employee compensation or even the profits. Uh, how do we uh, share? across their different units working in different geographies when you when you switch over from the from the you know the enterprise uh, 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 you know there is a there is a concept of uh, the the unit operating unit and the enterprise level data i think when you switch over to the enterprise data these problems are bound to occur that is the reason why I'm saying that MCA 21 data are not friendly or are not conducive for the regional accounting. We will have to make efforts to make them uh, uh, usable at the regional level. 
I think that that takes care of most of the questions as of now. Yes. Yes, okay. sir. Berman, okay. sir, any comments? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, it is almost about eight o'clock. Uh, now, what uh, I want to say is that basically, the, in my in my understanding, the heart of the issue is basically multi-level analysis. And see, we have a national level, we have state level, we have at least up to the district level. And see, India is a very vast country. In that country. The aggregate level and the aggregate level analysis is okay. It serves a very useful purpose. And there are certain constraints that is also there. But even some of our states are much bigger than many of the countries in the Western uh, world. And, and then, you see, even a district has about 20, 25 lakhs of people, which is really big one. Now, if, if there is a question of heterogeneity, there is a question of non-linearity, there is a question of path dependence. All are part of our econometrics framework. Now, when we aggregate them, the, what happens is that everything gets subsumed into the ag aggregate. Uh, that is one. And as I always say, that each of the distribution of variables are highly skewed. But by making it aggregates, uh, we, we are compulsorily make it yeah, uh, the, the homogeneous, uh, the, what is that uh, kind of a spherical distribution? So that is another problem. So we, we, we need to, we need to find out how to get into the multi-level framework of analysis. Today, data, granular data collection is much more possible because of e-governance. Whole lot of things have become part of the the information processing system of the country. Let me give an example of uh, for doing any kind of a survey, etc. We need a frame. We have been struggling, struggling, spending a huge lot of money, but we do not have a proper frame even today. Now we do an economic census, of which later on analysis finds out that at least 60, 70 percent of the units that are listed they are not usable for the kind of analysis. So the legacy of the past, we need to we need to apply our mind seriously to how to get over this legacy of the past. And in this connection, state statistical bureau and the district officers, they become much more important. And when we say centralization, centralization in the past, I see our our states are you see it is a federal structure. So in this federal structure, states always will have very, very important role in terms of these statistics also. Plus all kinds of parameters for measurement of performance also require at various levels of the state. So centralization does not mean that we should lose sight of uh, the sub-regional kind of a thing. Another very important part is that we always talk of uh, quality, consistency, and coherence of data. Now, whatever we have been doing in the past on quality, consistency, and coherence, present system says that these are these are not on. See, right at the stage of collection itself, you have to check for quality, one check. Then extraction, transformation, and loading, which goes into the big data or data world. At this stage, you need to have a, another set of check. Uh, for quality. Then final stage where coherence is required. And today you have seen a whole lot of criticism on the, the GDP estimate that came out with the revised series. Because people have access to various kind of a data. And we official statisticians find it extremely difficult to defend ourselves. Because see, our system for checking for quality, consistency, and coherence is highly deficient. We must absorb, as you have rightly pointed out in your presentation, we must absorb technology in a big way to improve our uh, statistical system. Next comes, as you have also pointed out, out, the measurement. Measurement of each variables come basically from the economic concept. And we need to see whatever shortcomings, whatever additional demands you have put in, 
I think it should be all part of our statistical system. And we should be in a position to find out a kind of a uh, the list of, of items that we need to collect, some of them on a regular basis, some of them with less frequency, considering that they do not change uh, so often. So it can be three years, five years, etc. But there is, a, there is a need for a complete thought on what is the on the demand side, uh, we have rightly put on, what is on the supply side, what is the gap, and how to increase the gap on the statistics, and what kind of a statistical, uh, statistical data we should have. Uh, that is, again, uh, very, very important, uh, yeah, very, very important issue. Then a question of, finally, question of the welfare, which we have touched in some way by human development index uh, and that kind of a thing. Again, as you have rightly pointed out, that we have attempts at district level, this level, etc., but there is no systematic approach, systematic way to get into a kind of a national level where we have this kind of a data, which are very, very important. Apart from income, people don't live on money alone, income alone. People have so many other things, education, housing, and all other things which are part of the human development index. Now uh, we need to we need to integrate them together so that we understand uh, the kind of a, uh, the kind of a development that is taking place in the in the country as a whole. So so uh, and then of course uh, time is important. Now the question that comes out is that in today's world. We, even if we have aggregate, we should be in a position to drill down up to the ultimate level. That's what technology provides. That's what com com computer provides. So if and Reserve Bank has done it right from 2000, you are you are knowing it. And mm -hmm. today, Reserve Bank with big data, etc., are going in a big way, much beyond the normal kind of a statistics to get into much more into the risk and return par parlor try to understand the risk that is forming in the system. That is also a part. We must know, understand what are the risks that is getting generated in the system. We should be in a position to come out. We should understand the risk well in time so that we are in a position to take appropriate measure to get into the risk. Second question is that we presume transmission channels, but what are the transmission channels? How the transmission takes place? Whether urban transmission takes place in a particular way, rural transmission takes place in a particular way. So rural income, urban income, all these are possible. Now, if you have a GIS, your coding of data sets, and you know what place and what not, you are in a position to get into urban, get into the rural. And this is an important part of structural transformation and what our urbanization is doing for the economy and how urbanization should be promoted uh, to, to take care of the welfare in some way. This is a, this is a very important issue which on which we do not de debate much because somehow or other we do not have this kind of a data. I am really happy that these issues have come out in today's discussion. The issue that comes out is that uh, you have also talked about productive capacity. You have also talked about the measurement of the accrued income and all these. I think these are all these are all very very important, and these are all which should be possible, uh, which we should do. The question that comes out is that at one time our statistical system was leading, at least in the developing world. Today, the biggest problem of our statistical system is that we have not been able to absorb the technology that is needed. And methodology-wise, possibly India is still, uh, I think, uh, goes at a very high level because uh, the, our people are very advanced in terms of methodology. But what we really lack in a big way is the absorption of technology, which you have pointed out with your example of district level and how poorly equipped they are. But with all these things, I must say, I must appreciate this that. Because Gujarat is the kind of a data warehousing that they have gone for. And the kind of a district level focus they have made with a target at the district level on the performance. I think this is one which should be learned for, for other, other states of the country. We must focus on what is our objective at the level of a district and what is the result and evaluate them and find out 
whether we are getting the result as per our expectation. That's very, very important because see, uh, otherwise, how do we know what we are thinking and what we are planning ultimately is it getting delivered or not? So to that extent, the statistics, statistical system uh, has become much more important today. And if India has to grow the way the government has projected uh, $5 trillion economy by maybe 20, 26 or 27, whatever it may be, <laughs> it talks about 10% uh, plus growth rate. Our economic exercise will not give us more than 7% or 7.5% growth rate. Our capital output ratio will not give us that kind of a that kind of an output uh, under any kind of a thing. But if you look, uh, you mentioned sometimes that what is the actual potential? The actual potential does not come from the past data only. The actual potential has to come from a different approach altogether. If China can produce in the in the per hectare output of Pedi is 60% more than India's. Even Bangladesh's per hectare output is more than India's. So we have really quite a bit of potential output gap, which is not captured as a part of past statistics, as a part of econometric research. Maybe our data envelopment analysis done in a particular way in a micro level can throw some light. But we, if India has to grow at 10% or more, which China did right from 80 onwards for 40 years, and today their economy is five to six times that of India's economy. We have no option but to strengthen our statistical system to go up to the sub-national level. You talked about flow of funds. I think we need to do much, much more on flow of funds. And as you know, our VSR system allows for going up to that level because that has account-wise information. And this is one important part. The corporate part, along with the factory part, if you can to establishment, map with the uh, enterprise, you are in a position to break corporate into kind of a, a geography. And with that kind of a geography, even corporate in some way, you should be in a position to get flow funds part sorted out in the kind of a corporate part of it. Government revenue and expenditure, I think it is amply possible to get into the sub sub uh, sub regional level, what remains is south source, uh, which is the challenging part of it. Now we should we should devise our sampling in a particular in such a way that we should be in a position to get the estimate up to the level of districts. And in various surveys, various ways, we try to collect this. Data. And if we integrate all of them together, the dream that you have, which I also have, I think both of us, and then for the country as a whole. I think we can we can we can see that our dream uh, is practified, but uh, I think we need to we need to steer up our systems to see that this happens. Reserve Bank somehow we started 20 years back. Today I am so happy that even Bank for International Settlement looks for Reserve Bank to understand what all big data technology that we are doing, and our people have become so expert. In this kind of a thing, we are uh, we are comparable to any other parts of the world. And in fact, in 2002, when I was making presentation in BIS, BIS said it is too challenging, too difficult. And I was very happy to tell that we, we in India we have the IT strength to do it. But this IT strength has not percolated into statistics, and that we need to see that it gets percolated to sort out some of our problem. As we say that in terms of concepts, uh, the theory, etc., I think we are we are we are we are at par with the other people. What we need is the action at that level to absorb the technology to go up to the ultimate level of general data. Some of the data, as you say, will not be possible. We have to allocate in some way. We can find out some auxiliary variable to do allocation uh, rather than what we do today because we can improve on methodology there also. I think with that, I think the government's dream of 10% plus, I think government should also think how to how to do this. And for doing this, they have to do a huge change in the information system. They have to give much more importance to statistics. And as a democratic country, statistics is an independent barometer to check on the governance also performance of the government also. As 
as retired people, as uh, people, we look forward to society, as a democratic society, to know that governance, gover government is appropriately assessed through information system. I think this is what, I think it's a wonderful presentation. And you, your rich experience, both in terms of theory, I was, I was participant in Ahmedabad 30 years back. That's when I, I got first exposed to you, wonderful lectures. And then you have been contributing very, very richly, particularly in the regional and sub-regional kind of a thing. Apart from, you are also part of our selling and investment committee. We work together. <laughs> So it's uh, wonderful. I think uh, uh, I, I hope uh, whatever we discuss today, I think uh, governor, government, it reaches government in some way, and we hope the government takes it from there. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for so so wonderfully uh, summarizing in such a short time your uh, your thought process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, Dr. Vanumurthy, now, yeah. uh, anyway, who, is the, who is giving vote of thanks? No, Bipin is there. Uh, yeah. So just, just to add to the discussion, um, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, I am. Getting... Yeah, so, so today, um, uh, Madhya Pradesh government, um, they, they, uh, uh, they, know, they passed an order to have a state statistical commission at the state level. Now, yes. I don't know how much the National Statistical Commission has done, but I am hoping the State Statistical Commission will have a much larger role than the National Statistical Commission because, you know, you, as you rightly point, both of you pointed out, the bottoms up is the important uh, aspect here. I think the State Statistical Commission could be a role model for overall strengthening the uh, sub-national statistics. So today, uh, the Statistics Day, the Chief Minister has declared that I am very happy to know that because I was a part of the committee yes, which has exactly. recommended this very yes. recently and yes. I am very happy to see that it has been accepted. Yes. <laughs> Dipin, can you? Yeah, sure. Uh, Professor Dolakia delivered a lecture on a very important topic, uh, a topic that is of vital importance both to the policy makers and the researchers. As uh, he rightly pointed out, the demand supply mismatch or rather the huge gap in the availability of uh, data at the state level as well as the district level cripples both the researchers as well as the policy makers. And so wonderfully summarized, you know, the existing data and it pointed out some of the limitations in the data, uh, like the irregular intervals during which the data is collected, lack of adequate infrastructure. It was really wonderful to listen to you. And I'm sure that our students as well as the participants greatly benefited from this session. Uh, we at uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar School of Economics University follow a quantitative and applied approach in economics and data is an essential part of the curriculum. We make them do a lot of uh, data crunching. And I'm sure this session was a great value addition to them as well. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dolakia, for delivering the statistical day lecture for us. And uh, Dr. Arbi Berman, he, was, uh, he gave a wonderful lecture last year and uh, this year and then he agreed to uh, chair the session. And uh, I must say that uh, his take on uh, the subnational level data from a practitioner's or rather a policymaker's perspective was very interesting. As he rightly pointed out, a lot of effort has been uh, put into uh, to bring data on various uh, parameters. And it is also interesting to note that uh, how it has changed over a period of time, how the data collection process has changed over a, a period of time. And he also suggested what more needs to be done Thank you, Dr. Berman, for uh, taking your time off your busy schedule to uh, chair this session. He had to attend another session, but he agreed to chair this session. Thank you, sir. And uh, I thank all members of the Indian Econometric Society who participated in this, uh, in this session. I also thank all the participants and our students and faculty who joined this session. Uh, we will be organizing several programs in the coming days. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we are looking forward to conduct several lectures, workshops, and training sessions in our newly inaugurated campus. Our campus was recently inaugurated by our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. So we are looking forward to organize several programs in the campus. Further, I would like to highlight that uh, our admission to the uh, MSc Economics and the MSc Financial Economics program is ongoing. So follow our Twitter handle or uh, follow our website for more updates. Uh, with this, uh, we shall end this session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so thank much. You.